London listed OPG Power Ventures, the India focused electricity generator, has produced a 32% rise in annual pre tax profits to a record as its total power generation has grown to 750 megawatts. It called the year a landmark but believes the best is yet to come. Ajay Paliwal is Strategy Director at the company and he's with us now. Uh, congratulations first of all on the numbers which I know came out last week but it's a, yep. a chance to talk about what's gone on. Um, revenues coming in up 28%, 128 million. Is what we saw in last fiscal year repeatable this year? Uh, yes, I think so, Jeremy, and more. Um, in fact, the, the numbers are stronger than they, um, than they appear to be in the financials and that's partly because we have a transla translation effect from rupee to sterling over the years rupee has weakened against the sterling so actually when you see the year-on-year -year, uh, rupee revenues they're higher uh, and the underlying business has been growing even st more strongly than the, the sterling numbers would suggest coming to the current year your question um, our first quarter revenues uh, are already over 50 million uh, sterling that is to the first quarter ended uh, June of this year so so we're so yes, 28 million more last year um, you're already you already started off on a, on a, on a fairly hefty uh, trajectory and yeah. um, what is it that's going to cause you to get the bit extra business and extra revenue this year what is it that's giving you that extra boost yeah well if you remember Jeremy we brought on uh, two major plants last year so we increased our capacity from like, 270 megawatts to 750 megawatts during the space of the year and that capacity was brought on progressively through the year so now we're going to see the full ramp up of all of that capacity and the full sale of the power <coughs> that's generated from it. In, in terms of the, the next year I said the, the best is yet to come I was taking that from a statement from your, your chief executive because you are going into a, a new area of electricity generation aren't you with, with solar. Yeah. Um, first of all why? Okay. Um, well, we, we think that it's, it's uh, the right time to get into to solar. Number one, we've completed our 750 megawatt program. That was uh, clearly a milestone for us. And before that, we didn't really want to get distracted by too many other things. And that, that of course, I just quickly update investors, yep. is those that don't know the story, this is all uh, generated by thermal, uh, it's, it's coal-fired power stations. That's right. That's just about all coal-fired uh, power and two locations in the country. And, uh, and so we're now going to augment that, is the idea, with some, some solar. The timing is right for solar because um, you know, solar capital costs have fallen. The, there is a policy push behind uh, solar in India and um, financing is available and we're in the right place to, to do it, to execute these projects. So we think it's the right time. Okay, before we get on to a bit more about the solar, just to check to find out whether or not you're wanting to expand your thermal business anymore or are you happy now with what you've got and that's going to be it? We think the solar business, that solar business is going to be important to us for sure. Um, but the thermal business is going to remain important to us and growing that business is going to remain important to us. So it's not the case that we are, or all of our growth is going to be uh, exclusively solar. In the thermal space there are uh, opportunities that we're looking at uh, to acquire uh, plants that are either currently producing or perhaps part built plants um, that are available at good value. And that's not been the case historically in the Indian, in the Indian power market. So the fact that those opportunities are available is, is a matter of timing, is a matter of value. There's nothing that we are committed to at the moment, but we have been studying things. My understanding is that the Indian government has something like a target of something like 100 uh, gigawatts of, of renewable energy, I believe. Is that right? Um, 175 ultimately? gigawatts of renewable energy by the year 2022. Right, yeah. okay. So your thermal coal is not even producing one gigawatt. So we'll put that into some sort of context. So there is tremendous opportunity out there for solar. How fast do you see solar um, producing energy? How fast do you want to get into it? And what do you want yep. to see as your, as your target in terms of so, power generation? So what we've not done for ourselves is set up any megawatt targets. We've historically been a company that's all been about profitability and, and cash flow and we can see that uh, this year you can see the cash flows coming from from our assets we intend to stick with that philosophy going forward in the solar business so it's not going to be so much about um, you know, how quickly we can scale up the megawatts as it is going to be about finding the profitable megawatts so we've been in tendering situations for solar solar assets recently um, and, uh, and quite simply, we've withdrawn from bids that we just think are too low. 
That is producing electricity at levels you can't, you don't think is profitable. Producing electricity and selling it at a level that we think is just not going to make us mm. uh, a decent return so for is our the, shareholders. So is, is the competition pushing the price down or is it the insistence of the government that you produce electricity at those low levels? It's the competition. It's the competition. The, the, uh, the chosen mechanism for most of these tenders is an auction process. Um, and as in all auction process, it some, sometimes becomes a race to the bottom. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, that's happened on, uh, on more than one occasion. And where that has happened, we have just pulled ourselves out of the race, mm. preferring to stick to our profitable uh, motive. O OK, so you've got all that set up now, I believe. Um, and you're bringing on how much power in what time, um, renewably? Or what, what's, what's so our first phase of solar projects is going to be uh, 60 megawatts, or 62 megawatts to be precise. Uh, and we should have all of those commissioned by next year, 2017. So up and running, so it's quite a up quick Up and turnaround. running and in cash flow, yes. OK, one of the benefits, I suppose, of solar is the fact that it's That is, is one of the, absolutely, you're absolutely right, Jeremy. That is one of the benefits of, of solar. You can build it quickly, and what it does, if, if it's done right, uh, and it, it generates annuity-style cash flows, which, given we've already put out our intent on dividends, we've put out a, a dividend policy just based on our 750 megawatts alone, then this will, the solar cash flows will just go to augment that dividend. You do already have debt on the balance sheet. How are yep. you going to pay for this uh, new business, this new arm to your business? We have debt on the balance sheet. We have been paying down our debt on the balance sheet. We are one of the, um, the least geared uh, power developers at this stage of development uh, in the country. Um, we, we, re we intend to remain loyal to our sort of fiscal disciplines, if you like. So what we are going to do is, is um, extend some of our debt. To, to pay for the solar assets. We're going to cost us about 45 million pounds. And that'll be a so, mixture of debt and equity. The debt will come from the, uh, the banks, um, which are very happy to, generally very happy to lend to us. They see as a good credit story. Um, and the equity we should be able to fund out of our own hmm. uh, cash flows. Hmm. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the share price. I want to bring this yeah. up because um, this is a, a chart that goes back to uh, just over, what, uh, two, two and a half, almost three years ago. Uh, the, the, the share price recently has spiked up to 70 odd pence. Just talk us through what's gone on and bearing in mind the company is so much larger now and you're producing record profits and record revenues, why the share price has fallen? Yeah, I think the, um, the share price um, has had a, a little bit of a hard time uh, oh, probably in the last year, really, and I think that started with last autumn's um, uh, disfavour, if you like, of, uh, of emerging market stocks. Um, and then shortly after that, we've had uh, two um, uh, of our institutions needing to, um, uh, to sell some of their holdings, not all of their holdings. Interestingly, it's been our other existing institutions that, uh, that have been picking up um, the, most of that stock. There is nothing company specific, um, uh, as far as we understand. So, look, I think the prospects for the stock from here uh, should be good. And, um, you know, if everything that we're saying is, is true in terms of prospect for additional revenues and, and cash generation, the dividend to come, then I think it's uh, a case of sticking to our knitting mm -hmm. and sticking to our model. Um, and it should come right. Yeah, uh, I think um, Macquarie and I believe Cantor have both got targets around about 120, 130 pence a share. Yeah. That would take it up to more than your previous record high. How comfortable do you feel under that sort of pressure? Um, do you think you can are, deliver that sort of share price return for investors? I don't think we're particularly driven by the analyst targets for us. Obviously, we're driven by getting the, the best value for our shareholders, uh, which includes paying dividends, which includes paying down our debt, and which includes, therefore, uh, doing as much as we can to, um, to make sure that the share price is reflective of value. So we've got, to do, um, we've got to do all that. That's not pressure. That's the day job, I would mm -hmm. say. So uh, no, we've got to just continue doing what we, we do. Um, and stick with what we know best. Yeah. Uh, you talk about dividend. Uh, it's interesting, actually, on your most recent release, you talk about a 15% um, initial payout target for dividend policy. Yeah. Um, uh, what is you going to be your longer-term dividend strategy? Well, again, we've, uh, we've been clear with um, investors. <clears throat> the first thing to say is, you know, we have always said to our investors when we built out our 750 megawatts, we will talk about dividends and, uh, and come clean on our dividend policy. We did exactly that. In fact, our dividends um, are going to be paid a bit sooner than the market had expected us. We're going to pay our, uh, looking forward to paying our first 
dividend uh, back end of this year. That'll be on that 15% uh, basis. We've also said in terms of longer term, we intend to take it to something more like a 33% a payout ratio. Hmm. Okay, um, let me just quickly sum it up now with a look ahead to the rest of this year. Uh, what should we watch out for in terms of some of the headlines to go for, bearing in mind your progress along this uh, path for renewable energy? Well, I think the headlines to, uh, to look out for, uh, number one is uh, the ramp up of the 750 megawatts that we've already built. And then secondly, the, the starting of our new solar developments. Uh, I think they will, be, they will be key. And the continuing pay down of debt, number three, uh, un until we do a, a possible refinancing, which is now available to us to bring down our overall cost of finance, again, money in the pockets of shareholders. And then on that theme, number four, I would say dividends. Mm. Okay, well, we look forward to hearing more, and please do keep in touch with us to make sure we get the latest news when it comes through. But Ajay, in the meantime, thanks for joining us. That's Ajay Paliwal. He's a strategy director at OPG Power Ventures.